Hello, I'm Ishani here. Welcome and thank you for stopping by for July's technique for a lovely card hop where some of us card makers are sharing loads of inspiration with color blocking and ink swiping techniques with our favorite stamp. Well, if you know me, you know I'm quite lazy and always rushing to finish my cards and do not have time to do detailed coloring. If you are like me, you'd love these card ideas with color blocking technique with my favorite stamp, Rennie's Roses by Altenew. So my favorite stamp set award goes to this stamp because it is also my most used stamp. I love these flowers. The design is such that an amateur like me can color, make simple cards or make a very detailed coloring card as well. This sentiment is one of my most favorite to put on my thank you cards as well. We have flowers, we have leaves which we can combine in different ways. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do to squeeze out every single penny from the stamp set. I've lately been seeing some beautiful color blocked cards with natural elements like mountains and rivers and sun but I'm a frugal crafter. So I thought how can I do that with what is already in my stash. So I got some colored card stock and my snow drift dies. And I have some saved treasure of circle die cards waiting to get inked to become my sun. My edge dies have stitch detail but the other side of the die gets a clean cut. So I arrange my dies in a way that they make two hills. I'll cut one from the light green cardstock and the other from the dark green. I take a white card panel over which I adhere my blue cardstock which would be my sky. Then I die cut my hills and adhere one of the hills and as I'm adhering I think of a cool way of stamping my sentiment. I get my stamping platform out for some eclipse stamping. After ascertaining where my sentiment will go, I use anti-static powder and stamp with Versafine Onyx Black and clear heat emboss my sentiment. Then I position the sun temporarily on the sentiment and stamp the sentiment again and heat emboss it too. Eclipse stamping is a great way to add more interest to the cards and though it looks a little tricky, it is very simple and may just take a minute longer, especially if you're doing for the sentiments. I adhere my other hill and mount my landscape with 3D foam tape on a top folding white card base. And then my sun on the foam tape too. Here is my first idea using the sentiment of my favorite stamp set and color blocking with cardstock and die cutting. I hope you liked it. Let's go ahead and see what else can we do. Let's continue color blocking with die cuts. I'm going to use these cute mini picture frames that I had used in my last shaker card video. Did you watch that video? If you haven't, I'll link it up here for some more ideas on shaker cards as well. Remember the scrap paper treasure box that we all have? I got some colors that I thought I'll never use together ever and then die cut them with these lawn fawn dies. Now let's add some stamping. I use anti-static powder tool and stamp some flowers and leaves with Versamark ink and white heat emboss my stamped images. As some of the colors of the cardstock were very dark, I chose to white heat emboss. You can use black ink if you choose or light colors. And now with all the stamping done, Let's get my color blocking game up by mixing my frames and the inset pictures. I take a white cardstock and mix and match my frames with the inset stamp pictures. I did not use a sentiment for this card but you can use a small sentiment on one of the frames if you'd like. And here is a graphic color blocked wall with colorful picture frames. I hope you like this card. Let's go and do some simple stamping for color blocking. Next card is a one layer card and I thought I'll do some color blocking with pastel colors for which I've taken the light colors from my stash and for stamping I needed a solid stamp and realized that I do not have a solid stamp in square shape. Then I thought of using the back side of my roses of the stamp set but I wanted to play with the shapes so I take this stamp set and I'm going to use the back side of my stamp. For my stamping, I'll be using a stamping platform. After I ascertain how I'm going to space the stamping, I prime my stamp with an eraser as this back side of the stamp has never been used. If you have a solid stamp, please go ahead and use that. But if you do not, you can certainly use the back side of any of the other stamps that you may have. My first color is frosty red and for all my subsequent stamping, I'm going to use this acetate sheet to position my stamp so that if there is any color, it does not get transferred on the cardstock. 
my second color is buttercream then i use mountain mist all these are from altenew and then cornflower by hero arts let's stamp some more i am using darker shade of the similar color that i stamped in the background i stamped with coral berry and we'll also use versa mark over it just to show you that you can clear heat emboss the stamping I will not be using versa mark for the rest of the stamping as the surface of my card stock is a little slick and the ink is not drying very fast. So I can put my clear embossing powder on the stamped image directly and heat emboss it. But if you feel that the dye ink gets absorbed very soon on your card stock, you can either use versa mark or use a pigment ink for clear heat embossing. In my opinion, an embossed image will look better on such a card. Next I use caramel toffee, then lagoon over my mountain mist all from altenew and then navy by hero arts for the cornflower background okay so i'm cheating did you catch that i hope you'll excuse me and if you're enjoying my video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new to my channel every new subscriber means a lot i hope you like this card and let's go ahead and see some more cards using the color blocking technique and some more techniques put into together carrying on with a little cheating my next card is a loose interpretation of color blocking and actually uses a block for stamping i'm going to use an acrylic block for stamping on a watercolored cardstock i take a stamping block and stamp yellow ink which is water based on half of the acrylic block then i spread some water over it and place it on my watercolored cardstock after giving it few seconds to absorb in the paper i take the other color which is blue and spritz water over it and place it on the rest half of the stamping block my previous yellow was not very bright so i add another color another layer of yellow and when the two colors meet I get a little green which I like. Then it's stamping like silhouette stamping with a branch of leaves and a bud and I get my black ink for stamping them. Because I have watercolor paper and it is textured, my paper may not give me a crisp sentiment in one go so I get my stamping platform out. Stamp the sentiment and for the card base I'm using a green cardstock as the little green of the mixed colors gave me an idea to mount it on a on a green card base and i do the same with strong double sided tape some pearls to get the bling and here is a quick and clean and simple card with acrylic block stamping i hope you count it as color blocking for the next card let's go and see what does the color wheel say because i'm using a floral stamp set and my leaves will be green let us see what are the other two colors that I can have my flowers with which will be true to the theory of color blocking. So the color blocking says that we can have the tetrad which is like an equilateral triangle of a color wheel. So if I want green for my leaves the other two colors will be orange and violet. So I go ahead and get my oranges and violets out. I'm going to stamp my flowers and leaves on Nina Solar White and I'm going to color them with my alcohol markers. Like I said earlier, I don't have time, I'm rushing. So I just take some greens and various oranges and violets and just do basic coloring. I'm just taking one segment, putting a color there, the darker color inside and the lighter outside. Because these flowers have such beautiful segments, it's very easy to color and you know, not a lot of scope for mistakes. After coloring, I fussy cut my flowers and I do exactly the same way the sentiment that we did for the first card. We're going to do the eclipse stamping for this too. And now I'm going to use two flowers to stamp my TH of the thank you. And I'll just speed it up because we did the same thing in our first card also. I adhere all my flowers and leaves with glue and foam mount my orange flower for a little more dimension. And I add my front panel on a top folding black colored card base with 3D foam tape. And here is my color blocked floral card with simple coloring. 
Do you have a friend who gives you cool ideas? Many bloggers would know my friend Pooja who makes beautiful cards. I'll link to her Instagram account in the description for you to see her amazing work. I was mentioning about color blocking video that I had to make to her and she gave me great ideas and the last two cards are actually her ideas to incorporate texture with solid block colors. I take a small piece of cardstock and I use my acetate piece to do a little masking and blend black color to form a triangle. And then yes, I have another <laughs> acetate sheet too, which I use to mask and blend in a beautiful color. I love this color, peacock feathers, just over my black triangle to form a stripe. After ink blending, I put this paper in an embossing folder by Via Memory Keepers. I adhere it with a piece of tape at the back and make sure that the angle of the embossing folder lines line up with my triangles line. Can you see what I'm making? I'm making a fancy flower vase, which I'm going to give a modern look by cutting it further. Now that we have the vase, let's have some flowers. And for that, I take a cardstock and blend some peacock feathers over it and stamp my images of flowers on this blended background. Then I fussy cut. You know, this is like a cheat sheet to coloring. I fussy cut my flowers and then with a black pen, I draw some stems which would be protruding out of the vase and reaching to the flowers. To complete the card, I use Happy Birthday which again is from another stamp set. I am sure you will excuse me for this too. I stamp it with black ink. Adhere my vase with 3D foam tape. And ta-da! Here is a modern card with a color blocked vase and some unconventional flowers. So we've reached our last card, the seventh card, for which I'm going to do a little masking and some stenciling to add texture. I take a post-it note and cut it to make triangles and adhere to my white cardstock in a way that it forms geometric pattern. I will blend cracked pistachio on this triangle that has been formed and I'm sorry that I forgot to record while I was doing this. I also put a stencil over it which was given by my dear friend Pooja and blend some black color over the cracked pistachio. The rest of the triangles on my paper will also be blended with ink for which I do some selective masking with my mask and blend pink which is Catherine Cooler's party dress and cracked pistachio a little more on the other side of my card. Now with my background ready, I stamp my flowers on white paper and that's it, we are just going to leave them plain. The sentiment also is fussy cut and I add a little pink shadow with the same ink which was blended on the paper to make it pop over the arrangement of geometric patterns and flowers. I adhere my flowers and mount my thank you sentiment and use double sided tape to mount this card over a top folding black colored cardstock. And here is a cool geometric floral color blocked card. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please do not forget to tell me which one is your favorite card in the comments below. It'll be so good to know what my viewers like the most. If you love incorporating techniques on your paper crafts, don't forget to watch the other tutorials of previous months and hop along this month. Sending you warm hugs and a lot of crafty time. Take care. Bye-bye.